Holy smokes. I just made the song levitating. This is Dua Lipa, a very famous pop musician who you guys have probably heard on the radio. And this is the baby, another famous musician who you guys have probably heard on the radio. Together they put out a pop song called Levitating, and the song has performed very well for the both of them. It has peaked at number 7 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, and on Spotify alone, it currently has 355 million plays. That's around 1.4 million dollars for the both of them. Have you ever wondered what exactly goes into these big pop records and what they do to make them sound so catchy? I mean, besides all the great marketing and lyric writing they do, someone has to record all the drums, basses, synths, guitars, pianos, and you name it, any other instrument that goes inside these songs. And that, people, is where I come in. For this video, I wanted to go ahead and remake this pop song so I can show you guys just how these big pop records are made. This is typically done by someone known as a music producer. And since I happen to be one, I'm going to attempt to remake this song as close to the original as possible, and for the sake of time, I'm only going to make up to half of the song, up until the end of the first chorus. And in order to do that, I'm going to need to go back to my studio, so I'll see you guys there. Let the challenge begin! To start off this challenge, I resorted to our good old trusted friend Wikipedia to see if it could tell me what instrument the original producers used in the intro of Levitating. And it sounds like this. It turns out the original producers used an old vintage synth called a Roland VP330 synthesizer. This synth comes from the years 1979 to 1980, and it is actually quite rare and quite expensive, costing at around $4,000 for purchase. So much for getting my hands on one of these bad boys, or so I thought. When it comes to expensive instruments, software companies nowadays actually sample these instruments and package them in a digital product and sell them online for an affordable price so that producers like myself and many others can afford them. You don't get the actual vintage synthesizer in like physical form, but you do get it in a digital plugin that allows you to basically mimic the sound of the original instrument. So after doing a little more internet research, I actually found a digital version of the Roland VP330 synthesizer. It turns out a company called Hollow Sun is selling a digital version of the Roland synthesizer for a whopping $25. Holy smokes. So I had to go ahead and buy it and see if I could recreate the sound from the original record. All right, so here I am in Logic and I have Hollow Sun pulled up. After spending about an entire hour just tweaking the chords and the synth and making sure it's as close to the original as possible, I wasn't able to quite get it. I'm not quite sure why that is, but I was reading online that sometimes digital plugins aren't entirely accurate to the analog version of synths. And I think that may be the case for this instance. So after spending about an entire hour on this and still not able to recreate the original synth, I decided that this $25 plugin can't quite do the job, and I just went ahead and resampled the original synth from the song. You win this round, Dua Lipa producers. Next, let's focus on the drums. Levitating has a traditional four on the floor beat, which means there's a kick on every downbeat and a clap or snare on every two and four. This is a very traditional dance beat that has been used throughout tons of songs over the years. You've probably heard it when listening to Avicii, Dancing in September by Earth, Wind and & Fire, and that one big song by BTS known as Dynamite. To create this drum beat, I will be getting my drum samples from a website called Splice. And by the way, several big artists use Splice for their drum samples, so I wouldn't be surprised if the original producers of Levitating actually used Splice. I decided to go with two kick samples from a sample pack called Oliver Power Tools, as the sample sounded pretty close to the original kick in the record. 
Now for the claps. If you didn't know, pop music is notorious for having layers and layers of claps and snares, not only in the verses, but also throughout the song, and typically in the chorus, there's even more layers of claps and snares. This song is no different, as I found myself using six claps in one snare. I also added a little bit of reverb on this clap here, just because if you listen to the original record, you can hear that there's a double clap with reverb on it, just to differentiate every two and four. Moving on to the bass. In disco songs, the bass is absolutely crucial to the beat. It's what gives the song that groovy vibe, hence the disco dance vibe. And since Levitating has this disco bass line, that's exactly what I'm gonna be making. And you all may be wondering, wow, is Zach actually gonna play bass? Does Zach actually know how to play bass? Does he own a bass? And no, I am not going to play the bass. Aww. I don't even know how to play bass, nor am I the proud owner of a bass. OMG. Although it sounds like the bass in Levitating is real, and it very well could be, most pop songs nowadays actually use a digital version of a bass on the computer, which means a fake bass. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm going to resort to a free plugin that I have been using for a while now, known as Ample Bass. And as you can see, it turns my MIDI keyboard into a bass instrument. I don't know how to play that song. And to my surprise, this free plugin was actually able to replicate the original bass line from Levitating pretty dang well. Check. For percussion, I believe the original record is actually using some form of a hat loop that is playing throughout the verse. I could be wrong, but it does sound like a loop. Now I have no idea where the original producers got this loop from, so I'm just gonna have to recreate this loop from scratch and as close as I possibly can. I decided to grab a hat from the Oliver Power Tool sample pack and just start programming in hats and also layering it with the shaker loop from the Oliver sample pack as well. And the results are as so. Although I wasn't able to get it exactly like the original loop in the song, it still does the job pretty well when you layer it with all the instruments so far. For the effects, I also grabbed this crash and this riser to go ahead and place at the transition from the intro to the verse. They aren't exactly what the original record had either, but they still sound pretty dang close. The next section of the song is the pre-chorus. And although this section is pretty small, only being four bars long, the original producers did a lot to make this section sound interesting. Let's start with the vocal sample. When listening to the original sample, it sounds like the original producers chopped up this vocal sample to only allow it to play on the downbeat. I believe they did this because in pop music, you really want to make every four to eight bars sound different by either adding something or taking away something. In this particular instance, they took away something by chopping it up and only allowing the downbeat of the vocal sample to play. The drums stay pretty much the same with the only exception being the hats. The hats no longer follow that loop pattern and instead now follow the downbeat of the kick. The bass line also changes a little bit, as it doesn't bounce around as much as it did in the verse. I 
I also went ahead and layered that bass line with another bass just to go ahead and thicken and make the bass part sound even thicker than it did in the verse. I'm not quite sure if the original producers did this, but I just know from personal experience that pop records do like to layer their bass lines as the song progresses. Remember what I said about pop music liking to add or take away things every four to eight bars? This is another example of that. Now here is where the fun begins. This is where the guitars and the strings are added into the record. So for the guitar part, the chords are B minor on the uh, seventh fret, and then uh, F sharp minor seven, slide down to F minor seven, finish on that E minor seven, and then back to the B, the B minor. It sounds like so. With the electric guitars playing by themselves, you can actually hear how boring and dull they sound right now. To fix this, I'm actually gonna use a plugin that I've seen many famous musicians use on their guitar recordings. It's a plugin known as Guitar Rig. And you love that setting on guitar rig. guitar rig. There's this amazing plugin called Guitar Rig. Now just flipping through presets in this plugin, I actually landed on this one. And it sounds pretty close to what the original record had on their guitars. I actually wouldn't be surprised if the original producers used Guitar Rig for their guitars. I also went ahead and recorded an acoustic guitar just to thicken up the overall guitar sound. Now for the string. Just like Guitar Rig, I'm actually gonna use a plugin that I've seen many famous musicians use for their string parts. And it's called Session Strings from Contact. And it sounds like this. With the strings and all the other instruments in this section, it sounds like this. Okay, now for the chorus, the most fun and recognizable part of a song. For this section, I'm gonna start off with the effects. There's actually a total of five different effects playing at the start of the chorus. Separately, they sound like this. I think these are the exact effects the original producers used, but in the context of the whole mix, they sound pretty close to the original. Next is two loops that I added to thicken the percussion. You won't really notice them when listening to the song, but believe me, they really help to add to the mix. The hi-hat loop from the verse actually comes back into the chorus as well and I went ahead and layered it with the hat from the pre-chorus just to thicken out the entire percussion section. When it comes to the claps, they're the exact same as the verse. I just went ahead and layered it with one more clap and one more snare just to thicken out the claps. I also layered the kicks with one more kick, making a total of three kicks playing in the chorus. This just helps to thicken the kick sound and make it sound more boomy in the chorus. You know, to get that dance vibe going even more. The guitar recordings are exactly the same from the pre-chorus. I literally just dragged and copied them over because they don't change in the song. For the vocal synth sample, it actually switched back to the way it played in the intro and the verse. 
And now for the bass and synths. Yes, people, the bass part changes for a third time in the song. The original producers really understand that small subtle changes throughout the song really help add to it and keep the listener from getting bored. The bass line is now played like so. And something I did to make the bass part thicker in the chorus compared to the pre-chorus, I just went ahead and layered it with a third bass as well as a sub bass to really thicken those lower frequencies. You really wouldn't notice it when listening to the song as a whole, but it does help add depth and thickness to the chorus compared to the rest of the song. The synths are made up of four separate layers, and they sound like so. I'm actually using VSTs known as Nexus and Silent for these synths. The very last thing that is added in the chorus is either a string or a synth part that is pitching up and down from higher to lower notes. I went ahead and just chose a string sample just because I thought that's what I was hearing, but it sounds like so. And when you play all these parts in the chorus together, you get this. If you guys wanna see my full remake of the Levitating song, go ahead and click here. Unfortunately, I won't be able to include my full remake in this video as YouTube will claim it as a copyright as it sounds too close to the original and therefore demonetize it. So in order to prevent that from happening, I'll be uploading it in a separate video on my YouTube channel. If you guys wanna see me create other cool things, go ahead and check out my Among Us video and Skyrim video. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.